everyone, Ian Wharton here. So I'm really happy to be guest hosting this episode of Edgy Edge Functions and talk about how I've been able to self-host generative open graph art on the edge with Superbase. Um, this is a project I had a lot of fun doing to be able to create open graph uh, generative art images for each one of my blog posts. And it's based on a blog post by Matthew Strom, who works at Stripe, who has created some really cool JavaScript to be able to do exactly the same thing um, for his blog on uh, Netify. And so what I thought would be great is to be able to take this and see if I could self-host it in Superbase. So that's exactly what I did. Um, this is quite a complicated piece of code. There's a lot of maths involved. And so I'd strongly urge you to go and take a look at um, Matthew's post about how it actually works. A grid of vectors that um, describe how x, y coordinates are going to be mapped. And it allows us to figure out how we can map a random value basically to a number of different uh, lines that do not cross one another. And it's a really interesting post. I strongly urge you to check it out, but I'm not going to dig into that here. I'm going to dig into how we do it, uh, how we host this. So if we dig into the code that Matthew has written, basically he creates a canvas that has a number of different lines on it that give all these wavy patterns. Those are added to a template and uh, a seed value is passed to that template. And that is what is sent up to the Netlify function. If we dig into the main code there, we can see some very complicated um, functions to be able to decide where the lines are going to go and be drawn. But at the end of this, we can see that these few simple functions for basically deciding a few lines on the page. If we look at how it's being rendered um, in this OG, Dot JS here. So it's being sent off to Puppeteer and there's a screenshot captured of it. What this will result in is if we jump over to his blog post again, is a image like this, which is uh, basically showing the title of the um, post and its subheading and is the author name. So if we jump back, and this code is uh, shared on his blog, so go and take a look at that if you want to get more details. Um, but basically, this is written in JavaScript, and um, it's fairly gnarly. I can't, um, I don't, I didn't really want to be messing with it too much. But what I did do is I got it working in Next.js. So there's a few things I realised about this. Firstly, this is written with um, Canvas, and as a result of being written in Canvas, it needs to have a screenshot taken of it. If we were to do this in something else, uh, another thing that is able to render 2D paths, say SVG, then we wouldn't need to be able, uh, need to do that. So that's what my primary aim was here, to be able to take SV, take the canvas, um, refactor it to work with SVG. So I started out in Next.js, this is what this OG test app is here, it's just a basic Next.js app. Within here, I've got an SVG, um, a TypeScript version of the file that you've just seen. So Matthew's original work. And if you take a look at this, the main things that you want to pay attention to is that I have a new type that is a flow line that tells us a path, a color, and the width of that um, particular flow line. And then I have a way of rendering this out at the end, um, which is here. This is actually redundant. Let's get rid of that. Bit, nice bit of live editing there. Um, this SVG, which literally it iterates over all the lines that it's gathered from a function um, earlier on. And um, so you can see it creates all these lines, adds the big lines, adds some small lines, and it iterates over the flow lines and renders them out. And in there we can see it's using the path, color, and line width. So an interesting, another point about uh, this um, is the build flow line function. So SVG is fairly simple in the way you can describe lines. So we have here an M and then a point uh, that describes to move to a particular point. So that's a starting point, the first one in this uh, array of lines. And then for every other point in a line, it draws a line 
<laughs> to it. There's lots of lines. Um, so for each path, it's, it draw, moves to the first point in that path and then it draws a line to the next point in that path and then it complete, keeps on going to its finished single path. So that's how one line is built. Um, if I just go ahead and run this, you can see what that looks like on my machine. So, so I'm just going to run oh, in the wrong folder there. So let's go into OGE test. So this is probably just going to pull up the Next.js app as the first thing, but we actually want to hit the SVG. There we go. So you see we get a lovely interpretation of um, the random seed value that's kind of um, triggering everything here. So here I've just hard-coded the seed value. This Originally this was a title, uh, the title of the post that was going in. So if we change this, we can change it to another number. We get a completely different artwork, which is really nice. It means that we can have a service that generates these artworks. Um, so knowing that that works, I want to be able to also put the te original text on it as well. So in order to put the text on the image, I have this other function here, which is SVG2. Uh, this is a demonstration of using CSS on the SVG because we can't actually put text on an SVG and be able to put a background on it, which we kind of need where we've got um, text going over these lines or want to have text going over these lines. Anyway, so if we, if I show you this SVG2, it's actually in an API folder here. So you can see here I've got background on it. This is really just demoing that um, I can put text with the backgrounds. And the way that is being done is by using the OG um, uh, library that's from Vercel. And that allows us to be able to render out text and CSS and crucially SVG into um, an image, which means that we don't actually need to call Puppeteer anymore when we're using it in a function, which is great for us. Um, so I then have this uh, div version within here that is using some fancy um, CSS, some more complicated CSS, in order to be able to render an image. So. Here's an example post that I've just hard-coded the title. You can see we've got backgrounds on the, and this is all just an SVG uh, with, uh, so if we dig into that, which has uh, been, been rendered out to an image. So we've got the OG image returning this back as an image for us. So if we pull down, let me close that sec, make this a bit more obvious. And you can see that this is all like heart, um, kind of embedded in the, it's not like you can call out to a style sheet or anything, we're actually just using it in line there. So we've got this image response here, and that just means that we get an image back, which is really good. So then finally, now I know that it works in Next.js, that I have this SVG um, function, I've been able to then put that into Superbase. So Superbase has its own edge functions. I've created a function here, um, which is index, uh, sorry, handler. And it's basically the same code as what you've just seen there. Literally carbon copy of it. And the only thing that's changed is actually these imports at the top here. So we're importing from a CDN that you can pull down and cache these things from, these libraries from. So in this handler, I've actually gone ahead and um, made the various parameters um, part of the URL. So we've got the author, the title, the sub, uh, subtitle, so we can just pass them in as um, arguments, parameters in the um, URL, and which are then passed to the image function. So now I'm going to try and deploy this handler to fly.io. So to do that, we do fly launch. Um, it says it already has got a fly toggle, which is in the repo. So yeah, we want to copy that into a new um, app. I'm not going to choose an app name. I'll get it to give a random one. 
and it's using London Heathrow uh, region as primary, so we can deploy it into a re edge region that is uh, closest to our users. I'm not going to set up Postgres because I don't need that. Don't need Redis. And would I like to deploy now? Yeah, I would. So we've got our new um, service there. If we pull that up here. Um, and then we need to specify our function, which is OG. And there we go. If you take a look at that, that's our image rendered out on the edge. Um, and now we've got this uh, ability to be able to define our title. Um, And you can see we can just specify that there. And we also have, I think, the ability to be able to change the seed value. So I can set it to anything. And so I can cycle and choose a particular image that I like behind this as well. So it is really easy to self-host um, Superbase Edge functions now with their new Edge runtime. Um, I hope you enjoyed the project and I'll speak to you again. All right, bye for now. Thank you.